What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for listening. I wanted to put this in the top of the show. Make sure you subscribe on Patreon, patreon.com slash Brennan Tassif. Check out the merch store at brennantcomedy.com to get your ex-drinking buddy merch. Subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. As always, we're coming to you live from Gotham Production Studios, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Grab me a beer and grab him a coat. We about to sit for an hour bullshit and tell jokes. And please don't mix it up, cause he done sobered up. Brandon T. Comedy on your social media feeds. And Brandon Tess, here, bitch, your ex-drinking buddy. 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 What's up, everybody? Welcome into another edition of Brandon Tassif is your ex-drinking buddy. I am your host, Brandon Tassif. If you're new to the program, quick rundown of the show. I used to be everyone's favorite drinking buddy. It was my favorite thing to do. Hang out with friends, get drunk, do drugs, get in all sorts of trouble, and then reminisce about those crazy stories. I am sober now, but that is still one of my favorite things to do. Reminisce about the good old days with a friend. Most weeks I'll be joined by a guest. This week is no exception. Sorry, that's wow. intense. All the way from New York City, Greg Nelly. Brendan, it's an honor to be here, man. Was that too much? It was a little. I was. I wasn't expecting it. You were kind of tired. So. I was. Yeah. You know what? We're waking up. You know what I mean. The day is starting. The day is starting. I just felt like it just ended. <laughs> it but did just for you. It for, did just. Yeah. End. But we're here again. Um, I, I just want to start off by saying twelve o'clock to bring a comic on a podcast is insane. Yeah. I did a podcast before this with two other comics at a, like ten thirty. We got here. That's ins- that's it's nuts. Good for them. Yeah, you know what I mean. The well, dedication. They've got, they've got wives and families and stuff. Oh, so yeah, I got like at least a decade for that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's just no shot. Plug everything up front. Let All everyone. Right. You've got the show that you and Jack are doing. Let everybody know what's going on. What's up? Uh, my name's Greg Melly. We have a show, my girlfriend and I, who will eventually be on this podcast as well. But we had to get the more entertaining one on first, obviously. <laughs> Ow. Uh, it's called New Kids Comedy, New Kids on the Mic. It is a brand new show. We've been doing it in a couple months now. It's going to be our fourth month this month. Uh, and it is January 22nd in the East Village, I want to say. Okay. 61 Second Ave at the Gray Mare. I'm telling you, it's fun. It's free admission, no cover charge, no drink minimum. And the comics we have on there are top of the line comics. Yeah, right they now. are. They are top of the line comics. I mean, we get... We get some really, really good It's almost like you have an inn somewhere where you can meet these people. It it, it feels like that, (laughs) Brennan. It feels like that. One could assume that, but I just think it's it's really just the good personalities. Yeah. You know? It's just that magnetic. your boy hosts it. So, like, come on. Come on. Are you kidding me? You're not going to be there? You're not entertained? Um, Are you not entertained? Plug uh, social media, everything else. Everything is Greg Melly. Instagram, at Greg Melly. If you are strangely from Philadelphia and like Sixers YouTube or Sixers Sports, follow my Twitter. It's at Sixers Greg. I actually this is Oh, is that like a you're like a huge Sixers fan? Yeah, huge Sixers fan. I, I do YouTube. I actually got noticed at the New York Penn Station on Christmas. Really? Yeah. For my YouTube, which is the craziest shit that's ever happened to me. I thought because I was with Jacqueline, I thought she put them up to it. Yeah. So I got really mad at her. Yeah. She was like, I didn't even know your YouTube name. So then I had to go back to these kids and be like, yeah, I'm Greg Melly. What's up? And they're like, oh, dude, what's going on? Like, love the YouTube. Dude. I'm like, that was the gr- I could die now. Yeah. That's the greatest moment of my life. Happened to me. I got uh, one time I got recognized by Hannah Burner's TikToks. You know, the TikTok she puts us on, the hand on the street thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I walked into my local diner around the corner and these three junk girls were like, I might. Because I'm always wearing. Oh, that I, was your, you put that on Instagram, right? I, I, I was wearing my merch. The video. Uh, no, well, yeah, yeah. I, I have posted some videos yes. of us. Okay. Because um, Hannah puts it on her TikTok, and then a lot of times I'll clip my part of it, and right. then I put it up on my Instagram because I don't want to do my own shit. Um, and so, uh, but I walked into the diner, and these girls were like, oh, my God, you're from Hannah Burr's TikTok. And I was like, yeah, those look like her fans. That checks out. Yeah, uh, like, mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, that's yeah. me. And I, same thing, though. I was like. Oh, that I've been recognized in New York City. That's it. I'm done. Good night. Yeah. The first thing I thought of was like, first of all, fuck Leonardo DiCaprio. There's no way you can get tired of this. Yeah. I had three 20 year old something kids say, yo, is that Greg Melly? And I'm like, this is this I is w- Greg Melly. Always has been Greg Melly. Like, this is it right here. So long story short, follow the YouTube if you I don't know. We'll do whatever you want to do. Yeah. So I didn't even realize you were I knew you were like a sports fan, but I didn't realize yes. you were that die hard about it until uh, Jack had a, a new bit at the open mic yesterday about how much you love sports, oh, which yeah. is hilarious. Yeah, it's I am. It's it's uncomfortable how much I would die for sports like it's like basketball to me as a Sixers fan is kind of like being an abusive relationship mm-hmm. because 
you expect them every year to be better, and then it just ends with you getting hurt. I thought Doc Rivers was going to be fired. I hate that man more than anything. Do you? You hate more him? More than anything. God. More than anything. I got to check out the YouTube page He's now. the worst. I do a sports be. show. I should have you on the sports show. Oh, dude. We'll do Sixers talk? We'll My co-host is talk. obsessed with basketball. Yeah, yeah. I could talk all day. Yeah, hell yeah. Um... Well, I wanted to have you on, uh, obviously, to plug the uh, the the new kids on the mic. New yeah, kids new on the kids mic. On the mic yep. Yeah, that's which is a big thing. Uh, I always like to have people on whenever they're whenever they're pushing something because we gotta we don't have a, a screen actors guild. We gotta support each other. So I did want to talk about how you kind of got to New York, though. You yep. had mentioned before the mics got hot when you first moved here. You lived on Wall Street, and you're like, oh, I guess this is what New York is like. And yeah. then now you live in Queens, and you're like, nah, no, this is what New York is, is like. Yeah, feeling like I'm the problem in my neighborhood <laughs> all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because like I'll, I'll be walking around and I'm like, this food is delicious, but why doesn't anyone know my language? And then I'm like, oh, because I'm the problem. You're the problem. I'm the yeah. That happens to me at work sometimes. A lot of the support staff English isn't their primary language, mm -hmm. and so like I'll try to tell them to like, do, like I'll be like, oh no, you should. We got to do it like this, not like that. But it just comes off as me being like a. A colonizing dickhead. Right, I'm like, there's no way around it. Yeah, it's like, all right. So some, now what I do is I've got a couple of friends that I've made, and I'll be like, Jose, come here. I need you to tell him to do it this <laughs> way. Like in a cool way. Yeah, know? like in a yeah, – do it yeah. in the, the Spanish. You know, do you the know, Spanish like, thing. Make me look like I'm not the white man. <laughs> it's not coming from me. It's coming from you. <laughs> um, so how did you even – because you've been doing comedy a little while now. How, how long have you been doing stand-up? I've been doing stand-up for five months, six months. Okay. Uh Kind of as long as I've had my job now. Yeah. But I came to New York two years ago because I'm originally an actor. Okay. So when my act, like acting started to pick up a little bit for me, I came out to New York. I was like, you know, my This is it. Right. This is why I we play the game. did conservatory. I went to Stella Adler. Graduated okay. from Stella Adler. Uh, and then I kind of pushed that a little bit. I had a role, lost a lot of weight for the role. The role fell through, which was oh, huge. Oh, no. Huge, yeah. What role was it? Can you tell uh, yeah, it was for a show that's on Amazon Prime. It hasn't aired. I don't. Okay. Even, I think the show entirely is shut down. Oh, really? Um, yeah, but because they got the wrong actor, dude. You getting me? So wait, what happened? So, so many, so many questions. Yeah. Uh, let's get back to before we get into the big picture stuff, like the acting and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk. I want to talk specifically about this. So, why did you start losing the weight? Did you start losing the weight for the audition? So for the role that I got, the role itself. Have you ever seen The Wire? Mm hmm. I would compare this character to Bubbles. Okay. Okay. So it's like I'm a police informant, like drug addict. You totally could play addict, that. Right. As someone I who's been to rehabs really, and detoxes, really you could play. Hair. It. I had really long hair, and I lost a lot of weight for it. I went down to like 115. But I'm saying, when you lost the weight, did you? Was that for the audition, or did you already have the role? I already role? had the role. Okay, so you we booked were, the role. Yeah, I knew the writer. Okay. So we were in on it together originally. He had the whole thing pushed, pitched everything. Um. As soon as the show became a go, a green light, I started, like, really physically changing. Yeah. And I don't know. I thought it was a lot cooler than it is, you know? Well, then what happened? Amazon calls and they go, hey, we want to put something else in it the It just role. eventually kept pushing it back, pushing it back. Uh, it was on the verge of, like, breaking down. And then the pandemic just continued to be shit. Oh, yeah. And then they just completely shut it dissolved all down. It. Yeah. God. I haven't talked to him since. I know he's been trying to push it back, like keep it going, but I don't see You kind of moved on. Yeah, I definitely moved on. So let's talk about, God, that's, that I would get so pissed, especially if I like did all these changes to like my body and then they're like, mm, never mind. Yeah, it uh, was, it was weird. 115's, man. I mean, you're not a huge guy, but no. 115 for anybody's tiny. Yeah. Oh, you could, I felt it. Yeah. You know? That's like, like Christian really Bale and uh The Machinist. Yeah. Great movie. Great movie. Great movie, dude. Dallas Buyers Club. Oh, McConaughey. My God. McConaughey. Yeah. Even Jared Leto in that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it. So um you're originally from Philly, I assume? Yes. Okay. So what have you always been a fan of comedy? Like, did you always want to be an actor? Like, how did you get to New York? Like, how did you even start any of this? Like as a kid, were you like doing theater or like how did that happen? Never did anything in the entertainment business ever. Okay. I took one acting class in high school at my high school. He loved me. He was like, you should do this. And yeah. I am like, I'll do anything anyone tells me ever. Okay. So I was like, I'm just going to change my whole life direction. No. So then I go to college. I get a criminal where justice did, degree. Where did you go to college? Shippensburg University. Hell yeah. Ship, Shippensburg. Yeah. Middle of nowhere. Ship happens. That's what, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, criminal justice degree. And then I get a political science minor. 
Where's uh, Shippensburg? Is that in Pennsylvania? Bumblefuck, Pennsylvania. Okay. Like where all the bergs are in the Midwest. Of okay. Pennsylvania. It, like I'm li- basically it's like Montana. <laughs> There's a lot of sheep. There's more kids at the college than the area. And every person that lives in the area that doesn't go to school there is on meth. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you go, <laughs> you do the one acting class in high school, you go to college. Uh, don't touch it. Yeah. I don't touch anything. My senior year, finals week. Of uh, college. Of college. I am in the computer lab and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do this. Like, this is what I, I'm, what I don't know what I'm doing. So I signed up for an acting class in Philadelphia and I graduated to college. I told my mom and dad, they were thrilled. To hear that I was never going to do this. Okay. And then I just kind of just went full blown into acting. So were, how mad were they? I don't really know if mad is the word I would use. It was more like disappointed yeah. and like this is going to be a phase. We'll let, we'll let this wear off. He's but you're already done. Out. You finished school. So like, right. I mean, you still had that in your back pocket. So yeah. I had two been... auditions to be a cop too. Or two <laughs> in, interviews. Is that what we yeah. Interviews. Yeah. I had two interviews to be a cop. But they were like, oh, I thought you meant auditions to play a cop. Oh, you no, meant like, like actual a interviews to a be a cop. legitimate interview to so, be like an okay, actual so, yeah. police officer. And they were like, you're not the guy. And I was like, I had a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about some of the interactions I've had with cops. Is that oh, what you told yeah. them? Oh, I've, I, we're going to get to that story yeah. later. Uh, so then you <clears throat> go into acting. You just jump in? Yeah. I, I The Philadelphia Acting Studio is okay. what I originally started off with. That definitely changed my life when it came to like mentality and like – just the the mental aspect of doing anything when it comes to like you know the arts yeah because i think that's such a big part of it is like you know affirmation manifestation whatever you want to call it um no 100 percent. but, but you're absolutely it, right it a is a lot of it yeah it's a very it's a very mental th- uh thing i guess yeah. words <laughs> but <laughs> i that was a young age too i was like 22 23 so that was like really really good for me and then i just started to kind of grow my network throughout philadelphia there so what what was the first couple of things you started doing? Was it stage? Was it commercials? No, it's, was it... it's I did everything was student films. Okay, and I found myself coming out to New York a lot to do New York Film Academy to do your, uh, New York University Tisch. Like I just mm-hmm. came out to New York a lot to do productions. And that's not like, that's not too bad, right? That's what two hours. Three yeah, hours not even like an hour and yeah. twenty five minutes. Oh, okay, so, so it's it was really nothing. close. Yeah, but it came to a point where lo- I was like, I'm not. I, I have to full commit. Yeah. to something. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I, when I was in still in Philadelphia, I applied to Stella Adler, which is a acting conservatory. Is that like a big one? Yeah. Okay. It's Robert De Niro, um, Marlon Brando, all, some of the biggest actors, but I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, it's like 35 hours a week. What's the process like to do, to get into Stella Adler? I had, uh, two auditions and then I had to also share like an interview. I had an interview. I had two auditions and like a resume. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, it's a little more lenient when it comes to resume because it's meant for younger actors. Yeah, so you're not going to have a ton. Yeah. Um, so you get in. What was that feeling when you got in? Oh, I was I was pumped. Did you like call your parents and be like, "See, I told you." Yeah, I was at home. I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." And actually, what happened was I was going to do it the year before, 2020 pandemic. Yeah. I waited a year and decided to go so it could be full in person instead of like on Zoom. So how long is the uh, conservatory for? Uh, the conservatory I did was three months. 35 hours a week, every Jeez, week. And that's it was a lot. A lot. A lot. I went very broke. Yeah. Because that was my first year in New York. I came to New York with I'm $10,000, almost to the T, $10,000. Yeah. Me too, like, yeah. I was like, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I said me too. Savannah and I. It was mainly her money. I, we had $10,000 when we got here. At the point of Stella Adler finishing and me graduating, I had a little less than $400 to my name. God. Yeah. And I was like, now I'm going to start to worry. Yeah. Now I need to figure this out. So then what happened? You, you finished Stella Adler. You finished the conservatory. Yep. So you've gone to college. You've gone through the conservatory. Now what? Now are you like, I'm acting? Yeah. I mean, I, I was acting throughout too. Uh, I started getting roles within TV, film, nothing like big, major. Yeah. Most of it was a lot of like smaller projects. But do you have, Um, are you SAG? No. Okay. Mm-mm. I didn't know. S- SAG is like. Unless you have to. Oh, okay. Don't do it because it really restricts what you can do. Oh, really? Yeah, you can't do anything that isn't SAG. Like, uh, so, like, when I'm a layman to acting, but 
when it comes to like big movie stars and stuff, they're obvious. Uh, like, are all those projects they work on? Those are all a part of the guild, right? Yeah, that's that's all. Okay, so, so anything big is gonna be through mostly the union. anything on TV that is a speaking role is SAG is union. Okay, yeah. and then. But what you're talking about is like people who are like putting together shorts or a student film or, hey, I'm just going to fund this feature myself. So if you're if you are SAG, you can't do those projects because no. they're non-union. No, exactly. OK, okay so I also, you have to pay to be in SAG. Mm -hmm. It's like a yearly it's like thing. Six thousand dollars. Yeah, it? I don't even can even tell you. It's crazy. But so during the pandemic, I shot my own short film, wrote it, directed it, started. Where is it at? It's on YouTube. Tell everybody. Oh, shit, dude. It's called Problem. It's like nine minutes long. It's funny. It's supposed to be comedic. I, do I look here? Yeah. I look there. Yeah. yeah, look at the camera. What's up? Look at the camera. That's what it is. Dude, technology, man. Yeah, it's, a, it's, well, a, it's, it's called technology. Problem. It's about the pandemic. It's like basically <laughs> the entire pandemic compressed into like two days. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's funny. Cool. All right. So then what prompts you into doing comedy? Was it because you got the job where you're at or did you? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. It's something I've always so... <laughs> wanted to do. Okay, but I... how did you find the job then? Craigslist. That place is putting jobs out on Craigslist? Dude, I've surprisingly had a successful life from things I've found on Craigslist. Really? Yeah, it's weird. Craigslist is like kind of like a sleeper app. Like I think early 2000s, if you wanted to get kidnapped, that's the app. Yeah. But now it's like lean towards like. It's an actual legit. It's a legitimate thing. So you go on Craigslist and you find that this particular club is hiring and you're like, all right, cool. Was it I want a job that is at night or was it I want to be around comedy? Like why? Because we were talking about it in the hours you work and like where you're at and stuff. It would be hard for anybody unless you are a comic or in the comedy community because then you'd be like, fucking, I love working here. Right. So what was the like mentality? What was the mindset to get the job there? I think it's always been that intuition of comedy. Okay. I think everything's always drawn me to comedy. Um, I've always been into it even before I like high school I would always write jokes on my phone mm -hmm. just because like I, I don't know why there was no real ex like reason as to why I was doing it but I, I yeah. enjoyed it so when I saw it on Craigslist it was like something like okay one it's gonna pay more than I'm getting paid now mm -hmm. and I have no money so that would be huge uh, but it was also like this is the environment that I want to be in even yeah. more so like if I don't know I want to do comedy yet like this is the environment where I'll see people who are successful mm -hmm. and like I can be a sponge. Yeah, and absolutely. And that's kind of how you have to approach it. Yeah, because that's a, definitely why I end up hanging out at the clubs that I hang out at so much. Like some people are, some people just assume that I'm past there because I'm there so often. Right. And it's like, oh no, not at all. But it's that same mentality of like, I want to be around it. I just right. want to be in the vicinity of comics I love and respect and and just that energy and so working there i can't imagine being around that for like eight hours a day yeah because really getting job. to know these people yeah it's when it's it's it becomes really cool because it's like you one have this perception of like they're so beyond me yeah like why would they even interact but then you really get to know these people at like a, a human level and you're like wow these are they're really good people like yeah. there's a reason that i think most successful people are good people at least in this industry mm -hmm. because i think you have to be you have yeah. to be likable you have to be you know because if you, you have to be so fucking funny to be a like a piece oh, of shit if you're a piece of shit i mean that happens but you have to be so far the other way for people to want to deal with you right like you have like you have and it's it's interesting you bring that up because i had that interact i had a thing with shane gillis where we were downstairs at the stands 10-year anniversary and we were just talking. I was busting his balls because uh, Notre Dame lost to Marshall in football. So I was like, hey, man, I played for FAU, you know, Florida Atlantic. We lose to Marshall all the time. The don't Owls? Feel... Yeah. Oh, oh my God, guys. Like, don't feel bad about it. And he's like, the fuck are you talking about right now, man? And But it was like on that, like what you're talking about, where you're like, oh, we're just two guys talking football. Like this, yeah. like we're just connecting on this thing. And then I was like, we could be the same person. And then he went up and murdered. And I go, we are not the we same person. Very far. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it's like when I first started working there, I always used to say that I've never felt so close to, and so far at the same time of what I've wanted. Yeah. You know, because I'm right there, but I am light years away. I'm years, man. They're so funny. Years away. So – when you start working there, were you like, all right, I'm inundated with comedy now. Like, I'm around it all the time. I'm going to start doing open mics. Or, like, how did you, like, stumble into performing and all now right. running a show? So let's backtrack a little bit. In Philadelphia, I I had – I did stand-up comedy one time. Okay. But it was a show for 30 minutes. 
the first time I have ever been on stage, I did a 30 minute show. That's also on YouTube. You can, it's literally called like Greg Malley first times doing stand up. I don't know. And it was very funny, but you could tell how green it was. Yeah. And um, I met a producer, a TV producer at the Comedy Cellar one night and I started talking to her and she was like, I love you. Like, you're a great person. Um, do you do stand up? And I was like, ah, like I've thought of it, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, do it. And like, get into it. Like, yeah. get into it. Like, do it. And I was like, okay. So I started doing it from that kind of, that interaction kind of pushed me. Mm -hmm. um, and I did open mics and then I did a, like the audition room, room at Broadway Comedy Club. Yeah, yeah, the industry room. Yeah, yeah. industry room, right. And I, from that, like I, that at least gave me something to push towards. Mm -hmm. So I did every day for two months, three months. Like it just really, really pushed towards that. And then obviously that went well. So I started doing spots at Broadway and Greenwich and kind of just, you know, it's been ever since then. And then that's why I wanted to do the show, you yeah. know, just because there's this clear opportunity for me to take advantage of. It's yeah, absolutely. sitting there waiting for me to, you know, make something out of it. So of course I had to do that. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. Look at that. A star know. is born. Yeah, Bradley Cooper. Hey, we're from the same area. Are you really? We are almost a couple of streets away. Well, his, his house is a lot bigger though. <laughs> it's a lot bigger. Wait, his house that he like grew up in was a lot bigger. Uh, I don't know about that one, but like they he the one that he uh, his parents live at now. Oh, okay, okay, like, that makes sense because he's rich now. It's unreal. I thought I thought you meant like he came from money, and I was oh, gonna say I don't, oh, I mean it's the, like the suburbs of Philadelphia. Yeah. It takes him down a peg in my mind. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like he uh, plays like these gritty characters, and I was like, oh, yeah. You... Philly's still gritty, though. Yeah, like, Don't that's sleep true. on the suburbs the of Philly. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. That's the second cringy thing. It was the first the owl thing, and then that. Well, it's all right. We're working we're, on we're it. Working on we're it. working on the it. The owl thing always happens. Oh. You play college football? Yeah, I was a college football player for Florida Atlantic. I'm always going to do the owl thing. That's okay. What but, position did you play? Fullback. Yeah? Under the great Howard Schnellenberg. Why is that the most... Of course, yeah. answer. Because <laughs> I'm a six foot one, two hundred thirty pound white, white guy. guy. Of course, I played fullback. <laughs> Do you like a like ever like catch? Like you're like out there catching passes? Or more, <laughs> no. Like, All right, that's okay. This is Division One football in South Florida. I didn't know if you were like John Coon. Bro. Alfred Morris was our starting. Was he really? Back. Yeah. That's nasty though. Yeah. How cool was that? Yeah. Good buddy, Big Alf, Alf Dog. Shouts oh. out, Alfred Morris. <laughs> Alf. <laughs> where, Alf. Where, I wonder where he's at now. Uh, I think he's living in Virginia, I want to say. Um, yeah, he bounced around the league a little yeah. bit. 10 years, 10 was year it vet. 10 years? Yeah. Dude, as a running back, that's got really drafted impressive. in 2012 in the sixth round, ended up being the was starter. He, a pro bowler? he broke all of Clinton Portis' single season records his yeah, first year. He was at Washington forever. Yeah. Well, th yeah, he was there for the first. They, um, God, we're going to get on a tangent, but he was there for the rookie contract. He ended up winning the starting position before week one of 2012, him and RG3. Remember, they were running that oh, split yeah. veer, uh -huh. so they were breaking all sorts of rushing records. And then he made the Pro Bowl. I think he made all pro that year. He was really good. Year. Um, and then the next year, he did really well. And then RG3 gets hurt, and that kind of dashes the whole Shanahan right. offense. And so then he ends up... Uh, they just run him into the ground. And a lot of commentators, and, or not commentators, but a lot of like analysts were like, oh, they're just going to run Alfred into the ground on this offense and then just not renew his contract. And that's kind of what they yeah, did. Yeah. And then uh, he got picked up by Dallas, played for Dallas for a few years, started a couple games when Zeke got hurt or when yeah. Zeke was suspended. And then Tony Pollard came in and kind of took over that role. Then he went to San Francisco for a little bit. Then he went after... Garrett gets fired from Dallas and goes to the Giants. He ended up playing for the Giants for a couple of years. And he was just the NFC East guy, right? Yeah. Now. Well, because a lot of those coaches, it's very incestuous. A lot of those coaches very. stay in the NFC and then yeah. they get the guys that they like. Yeah. Like that's why uh, Robert Sala still has a bunch of players from the 49ers that washed, not washed out, but like the 49ers cut him. And then when Robert Sala got the job for the Jets, he's like, right. oh, no, no, no. Come on, guys. Come on. Everyone stays with their family, man. But the last thing I'll say about it, fun fact. <laughs> Uh, my ex fiance and I, we talk on occasion, but she's married now, lives lives her best life. But she texted me like a year ago because I was living in New York at the time. And she mm -hmm. goes, hey, didn't you play with Alfred Morris? Like, isn't that your friend? She's a big Giants fan. And I was like, yeah, that's one of my one of my buddies. She goes, yeah, he's on TV right now on Monday Night Football. <laughs> I guess one of their start, uh, Saquon was hurt all last year or the year before. And then the backup running back got injured. So Alfred wow, was starting Alfred. like 10 years into his career. Good for him, man. Starting for the Giants. That's um, impressive as a lifespan as a running back. It's oh, like yeah. Because normally years. it's normally, yeah, it's the first contract and then you're out. Yeah, you're your done. rookie deal and then you're done. Yeah. But 
You really do love sports. Love it, dude. What got you into sports? Did you play as a kid? Yeah. I All played right. baseball and basketball in high school. I only okay. played basketball for one year. But uh, yeah, my whole family is very sports. Yeah, I love I love sports. I th- people always go, oh, it's stupid. It's just a game. It's like, yeah, but there's no, there's nothing else in the world that can bring people together like sports. Can. I don't know what it is, man. But it's... Plus, I love competition. Love it. This Hamlin thing, man, that's nuts. Crazy. Uh, he's going to be okay, though. Did you I, see the yeah, update? I saw the update yeah. this morning. Yeah. That's good. Thank I God. Was, I don't know what the hell happened. I was I literally started crying at work because I was like, he's because I've got a lot of concussions and PTSD and stuff like yeah. that from playing for so long. So when I saw him go down and then like his teammates were crying, I just started crying at work. I was, was like, he's was crazy. He's gone. Yeah. Like, he's not. The way he dropped. They yeah. did CPR on the field. Yeah, Ten minutes, nine minutes. Anyway, let's get back to you. So this is we're going off the rails. Uh, <laughs> So you, uh, when did you, cause you said you played sports in high school, obviously you played baseball. You said you played one year of basketball. Uh, you're in, you're going to college. That's your whole thing. So when were you like, cause you sent me some stories and some of them happened obviously when you were in high school. So when did yeah. you start drinking? Did you come from like a party kind of family or when did that happen? Absolutely not. Brennan. No, we come from, I, my family is like not family, but I'll say my parents are very like buttoned up. Catholic, religious. Oh, very, really? Like, yes. I went to private high school, all boys school. Really? Su- I didn't tie. see that coming Su- at tie. all. No, I went to Catholic grade school. I, I did Catholic school all the way up until it was my choice. <laughs> and then I went to a college with a 94% acceptance rate. Okay. Yeah. If that you want to really get to know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really want to first to time I Greg. ever drank, I was 16 years old. Uh, I went to a country concert i hate country music forgot that was the first time i know you talked about i you have the bit about it yes i I do so let's set the stage you're 16 you don't drink you're there's a concert what is it your friends are going girls are going i remember there was a reason you were going yeah so this was like the way that all this is what all the cool kids did was we went to these country concerts and we just like got wild yeah right and these country concerts to paint you the picture it was like it's Susquehanna Bank Center. I don't know what it's called now. I don't think it's called that anymore. But th- it was this venue with this lawn that mm-hmm. was just a mile. Yeah, like it was massive, and it was just a bunch of like horny sixteen-year-old kids running around making out with each other. Yeah, like, that's what it was, right? But that was Fuck what yeah. we were dying for. Yeah, because I mean, I'm sixteen. I was a virgin. Like I didn't even. I don't even think I. I kissed a girl one time. Right. Yeah. Um, I was just very excited to really like get into that environment so, so how did you know about this environment like this is what your friends are doing all, yeah it's, okay. it's all all the, so all the you kids hear about grade. it and you're like let's fucking go like let's do it you yeah know what I mean? like, let's get after it it's like i'm going into my what junior year i guess yeah so 16 junior, year yeah i'm going into my junior year it's the summer it's summer just started i'm like let's just like i'm becoming a, i'm a man now brandon <laughs> i'm a man like let's i was a very strong i was like 90 pounds i was like five eight 90 pounds like a, like a strong gust of wind i'm out so that's hence the one year of basketball yeah exactly and the you know you get yeah. it but uh i you get it you get it we, you, you get it. event you, you get, get it, it. i right get it. it you get it uh yeah Showed so up to south florida like oh i'm not gonna play here you're like oh ath- you need athleticism that's gonna be a shame that's oh scout team all american i'll block for the guys I'll run scout team <laughs> yeah. uh so yes, I'm I'm 90 pounds. I'm about as tall as I am now, I'm sure. And I'm thinking like this is the time to I got this. I'm gonna get girls. Yeah. And then this is a huge opportunity huge. for me, right? Like I'm gonna lose my virginity, and I'm gonna tell my brother. Like there's nothing I want more in my life than to tell my brother. Older. Yes, obviously. much older. I'm like, dude, I did it. You know what I mean? Like it's in the bag. Let's go. Because my brother's been thinking I was gay for like <laughs> my whole life. You know, and I'm yeah. like, I've spent my whole life trying to force to show him that I'm not. That's the whole yeah. more so than my, I, I. I know it. I I think I know it, but I'm like, I you need bring to Jack show home him. just to be like, yeah, you see, huh? and he's like, yeah, but her name's Jack. And I'm like, <laughs> shit. All right, <laughs> so uh, I, I show up to this tailgate, and there's like 40 minutes until the concert. Like we're late, right? We yeah. get stuck in traffic, so it's 40 minutes until this this concert, and we really really need to drink <laughs> because. 16 year old greg is not bringing in alcohol to a venue you can't and i'm yeah. not gonna buy anything there because you're 16 i'm 16 and i drank 13 course lights in 40 minutes that's so many Coors Lights. so many i thought i was gonna be like the cool kid because there were like girls like they were way too hot for me to be hanging out with us there yeah like they were like fours brennan <laughs> like smoke shows right 
and I died. Don't do your fucking bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tell right. Tell the story. <laughs> I, dude, I died. I, I, I died. I, I really died. Like I saw God. That was the first so, time. So, and all, and all, I, I, I'm only half joking. Obviously, do the bit because it's funny. But, uh, oh no, the bit's done. It's too late. <laughs> but. Are you – when you're drinking, because you've never drank before, so yeah. are you thinking like – because Coors Light is kind of – you know, it's not the the strongest beer. It, like it kind of goes down – it's not – I don't want to say like water because it's your first time drinking, so it definitely tastes like beer. But are you – like what's going through your head? Are you like we just got to slam these or slam like – Slam these you're just... by any means necessary. God. Slam – and I didn't really feel them. Yeah. Until like, I don't know, nine – Right, I don't, I, cause I was slamming these things. Like I really did, I, didn't have time. Yeah, and I was just, just like shotgunning, shotgunning. Oh, so you shot? Okay. Yeah, they were bad. I'm sure I can't shotgun now, let alone when I was 16. And I was just like pounding them back. Yeah, and because then by was, nine, ten, you're kind of. Like, I started feeling it towards the end, but I really didn't feel it until I was done walking to get into the venue. So yeah, because it takes a while to metabolize in your yes. system and stuff. So you chug all the beers, and then everyone's like, all right, we gotta get inside. So you turn and you start walking and, and then, then you're I'm like, like, oh fuck. I've made a terrible error. And it's just like that feeling getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse the further I am. And I'm like, oh I'm there's no way I'm getting into this place. Yeah. And I get in. Like without How, any problem. Okay, I was gonna say like, they just, no just showed up, gave me. Yeah, a he ticket. was just like next. Yep, it was like the DMV. Like they didn't yeah. give a fuck. You yeah. know, I just like got in, and there was no issue. And I've shown up to the DMV drunk before to get stuff for my car. And yeah, they're like yeah, whatever. All yeah, right. just yeah, whatever. Like, I drove your hammered, and I'm leaving hammered. Yeah. Like nobody cares. No, <laughs> this is the DMV, bro. I mean, it's like people who have given up on their <laughs> lives. They're like, shout out to all the it. DMV workers out there. You're heroes. We love you. Um, essential workers. Essential Essentials. workers. I mean, that's when I think of essential worker, Brendan. I think DMV. I think a DMV. See, I don't until I need to get the the real ID that like the new IDs and like whenever I yeah. need something, I'm like, fuck, man. The yeah. only place you can get it is the DMV. I actually just got my ID, my new license picture taken like a couple of weeks ago, and I went home after like two years of yeah. having an expired license, and. This lady who is in a lady. This lady has a breathing tube in her nose. Like she's like an like seven oxygen tanks behind her, and she's like, uh, "Are you an organ donor?" And I was like, "Yes." And she's like, "Ah, better you than me." <laughs> what? That's like <laughs> the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not dying today, lady. Like, yeah, but I hope I look like you when it's time for my organs to be taken. Like, better you. I, anyway. <laughs> If she's still out there, shout out to Oxygen Tank DMV lady. I was in there for like six minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, it was awesome. I've had the worst experiences. We're getting sidetracked again. We are. You get I'm into sorry. the concert. ADD is crazy. I get into the concert, and it, it literally five minutes go by. Next thing I know, I am sitting on this lawn just projectile vomiting between yeah. my legs. Bad. Like, I'm, I'm dead. I've never been this God, drunk since. That's... Like the worst. Just like so much. It had to have been alcohol poisoning to the max, right? A cop comes up to me. Well, it's also um, fun fact. Just because I've had alcohol poisoning a few times, uh, what happens is when you dump that much booze into your system, your body instead of trying to absorb it, your body will try to get it out, like food yeah. poisoning in a way. Yeah. So that it sounds like your body was like, "Get this fucking out of here! Like yeah. we don't want this." You drank more than your body weight in <laughs> in Coors Light. Yeah, disgusting. Fucking Coors, 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 the banquet Coors. beer. Banquet beer. Uh, so this cop comes up. to Cop you. comes up to me, <laughs> like right away. Yeah. And there's two of them actually, and they they pick me up, and the moment that happens, like all of my friends looked at me and they were like, "Yep, oh, that's it." <laughs> You're Greg, out. Greg's gone. Greg's gone. <laughs> he lost. He had Greg on their their let's, bingo board. He's, let's he's go. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. I was let's go back to this concert, you guys. Greg's yeah, out of here. They're like, yeah. Mm. They one less shot for him. Uh, yeah. Like I, that's the moment. Like you know. Yeah. And. The cop starts talking to me. He's like, uh, Greg, like, um, like, where's your mom and dad? Can we call them? And I was like, oh, they're actually in Hawaii. Were they in Hawaii? No, they were in Hawaii. They were 25 minutes south. You can't let them know about cannot. this. Dude, can not. And they were, I was like, but you can, like, call my brother. And they're yeah. like, all right. So me and this cop start talking. The cop tells the other cop to leave. That's what I was going to ask, yeah. He tells the other cop to leave. <laughs> so we're walking. He's like, I got this. Yeah, he's like, don't even worry about it. Like, this one's mine. We go all the way down to the end of this lawn, and he's just, like, talking to me. We seem like we're having a good conversation. I, I've sobered up. Like, I'm not really sobered up. But, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm enough to a point where I'm having a conversation with this guy. And 
uh, he's like, you know, you seem like a really good kid, Greg. And I was like, thanks. So we go to this bathroom that's like literally at the end of this this lawn. All of the bathroom stalls are full. And he knocks on the last stall and he puts his badge over the stall. And the guy runs out. Mm-hmm. I get in and I get into the stall and I'm thinking like, wow, like what a great guy. You know, like cops aren't that bad. Like this is huge. Like yeah. he's just going to let me throw up in peace. And I look up and he's in the stall with me. Okay. Which is like, that's a red flag. That's weird. Right? That's a it's red flag. Super fucking super weird. Super weird. That's before like I knew red flags. Yeah. But that one was like something hindsight, seems off about Red this. flag. Hi- yeah, it was a big hindsight red flag guy. And he looks me in the eyes and he says, Greg, you seem like a good kid. You know, I don't want anything bad to happen to you. What can you do for me to help me forget about what just happened? And I'm 16 years old. This is the first time I've ever drank. And I was like, you know, now I understand what the marches are for. Yeah. You know, know, I I get the defund the police thing. And I'm like, shit, um, I can stop drinking. And he's like, that's not enough, Greg. I'm going to need more. And I was like, holy shit. Now, at 16, because I know you talk about it on stage and stuff, so you've thought about it a lot since. Yes. But at 16, in the moment, you had mentioned earlier, you didn't know what red flags were. Are you thinking in your head, like, because I don't even think it would occur to me, like, to be like, oh, he wants me to suck his dick. A hundred percent. You are thinking about yeah. that. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Maybe you are gay. That uh, hit. <laughs> it's it. like, I hope he wants me to. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. It's in Damn. it right away. But when he said, like, that's not enough, I was like, oh, shit. I'm going to blow this dude. Yeah. Like this dude, this is not a good time to tell my brother I'm straight. You know, like I'm going to have this. This is going to be. And just speaking from experience, from being arrested as many times, because I've been arrested eight times. There's always that moment the first time you get arrested where you think, oh, my life is over. This is the end of the world. Yes. And then, and now, I mean, it's obviously looking back on it. It's easy to see how people can fall into that like life of like crime and stuff, because it's very much like after you get arrested two or three times, you're like. Oh, like this is easy. Like you go in, you hopefully get ROR'd. If not, you get somebody to make bail or you just sit in jail until you go in front of the judge. And then you get to, especially if it's like misdemeanor stuff, you're like, yeah, what, six months probation? Like, yeah, fucking, all right, I'm out of here. Right. But I can't imagine coming from the background you come from with the parents that you have that are super Catholic and strict where you're like, oh, I would much rather blow a guy. Oh, yeah. Then you have to deal with this. Yeah. That's insane to me. Yeah. I, I mean, we'll get with other stories later on that my parents obviously find out. Yeah. You know? Um, but in that moment, 16 years old, like the scariest thing to me more than anything is my parents finding out yeah. that I've and done something. And he knows something. that. Yeah, he must have. That. He yeah. must have known that. I mean, I I, gave, I told him the thing about Hawaii. Like, who knows if he believed it? Yeah. Who knows how good he is at listening? You know. But, well, and I'm sure most cops, most um, predatory cops who are in that position, look for younger kids because they go, "Oh, well, they're all scared of their parents." Right. Yeah. I was so. I was terrified. It was getting in trouble was the scariest thing. Like, I didn't even process at all what happens. When you get in trouble with police. Yeah. Like I, I didn't – I was never really – know. like I didn't know what it was like. I yeah. never got in trouble before and I was like, holy shit, I'm going to blow this guy. So like, he says that's not enough and then you think like – Yeah. So I'm like I can stop drinking. He's like that's not enough and I was like I'm running out of options here before that the was my That was my trump card. I was, was like, yeah, I was like that was the get out of jail free card. I'm going to have to find something else. And so at the time I had $41 in my wallet. And I told him that. I was like, I have $41. I can I can give you all of the money that I have. And he said, I don't want to be a dick and take all your money, which is ironic to me. Like, this is my bit because yeah. I hope he did stand up because that's just like, come on. Yeah. You know, we're all thinking about it. He just happened. to. I liked it. I thought it was a fun little Freudian slip. And he ended up taking $40 from me. <laughs> I had two 20s and a one. And that fucking guy took Forty dollars from my wallet, like, dude, just take the forty-one dollars. Yeah, take the dollar. Yeah, I would have rather blown the guy than gone home with a dollar. How was I supposed to go home? How are you yeah, supposed to do anything with a dollar at all? And not even that, I was dead. I had nothing to me. So what happens? Because I know I've heard you, like I said, talk about it before, but I don't know the end of the story. So like, what ends up happening? Like you, like he, in, in in reality, like when you're actually there, you you give him the forty dollars and he just leaves. Just leaves. Fuck. Nothing. You. He says nothing. He takes the money, opens the stall, leaves, and I'm in the stall. Just dying. 
dying. Uh, like, but what even like, but shit. even beyond the dying, it was like the what the fuck just happened? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. That was you like went the from, craziest thing that's ever happened. You went to me. from thinking you were being helped to thinking you're gonna have to blow somebody yeah. to giving up all your money to being a, a but and alone also being alone, stall. nowhere near where I was. Yeah, you're like I, a mile I, away. I sat down at like section one, and we were all the way at like 28. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I'm, I, I, what the fuck? So I get up and I leave, and I just start awkwardly drunkenly walking back and i the my favorite part of the story but it isn't really that funny but it's 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 something i remember so vividly is like when i come back to all my friends they lost their shit oh really they lost their fucking they were like oh shit like greg what happened i was like i don't know dude i had no i i don't i killed the I, cop yeah i killed him buried him in the back yeah it was fucking that don't fuck with me you know and i just sit down and I, I just throw up the rest of the night. So you just keep throwing up? I just keep throwing up. And God. no one comes up to me at all. Not a cop. No one. And I'm like, I don't know if I just hired somebody to, like, be my security guard. Or, like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> I was like, did I just hire protection? And then there was this one point where everyone was feeling bad for me because, like, I was I was dying. Yeah. I was dead. And um, I had this ex-girlfriend at the time from like two years ago and I see her and she just felt so bad. And the worst part about it was the, the most sickening part about it was I was throwing up. I just got done. I still had it all over me. Yeah. And this girl was like so sad for me. She was like, I'll give you a kiss. And then she kissed me. And then like when we like let go, she had the throw up. On oh face. no. And I haven't seen her since, but I see her on Instagram and I'm just like, oh, that girl had my throw, throw up, up on her face. <laughs> and she's That happened to me one time when my drinking was really bad. I was out at a bar after work. And we're all just doing, getting fucked up. Yeah. And I used to drink Sailor Jerry Neat because I'm a psycho. <laughs> it's at a psycho. Show. Um, and I remember I was drinking it, and I was so hungover from the night before that as soon as I started drinking it, I was like, "Oh, I have to go throw up." So I ran to the bathroom and I threw up everywhere. Came out and it was still like on my face and stuff. And then a girl that I had a huge crush on was like, "Oh my god, do you want some of my water?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I just took a big sip of it and like throw up was on the oh glass. My god. And then she started drinking out of it and they go, "Brennan, didn't you just go and throw up?" And I was like, "Yeah." And yeah. she was like, "What the fuck? <laughs> you just drank out of my cup?" And I was like, "My bad." What are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah what are you gonna what do? You gonna do yeah? I want to do a. Um, ask you uh i wanted to t talk to you about because that's i think this also happened when you were younger the uh getting um the written arrest for being drunk when you weren't yes. drunk yes when was that freshman year in college okay so you're 18 yes okay. i think it was 19 i was it was january i think okay uh so what happened so i'm were I'm, you well hang on before we get to it i don't mean to interrupt but i know you're just, good i set you up and then i interrupted you because i'm a fucking shitty host uh <laughs> So after the 16, because that was the first time you drank, did you keep drinking? Yeah. Were you like partying like yeah. crazy with your friends I, now? Even later that summer, I would go to a lot of country concerts. Okay. It became So it like was a, always the country concerts? Yeah. Okay. I, at least in high school, it was always like con concerts. Did you get concerts. to make out with any girls at the concerts? Oh, yeah. We dabbled. Once you, know? you got it under we control? Dabbled. Yeah. Once I realized, don't kill yourself. Yeah. It became a lot easier. Okay, cool. You know? So then you get to college. Uh, now you, you're, you're a veteran of the party scene. And yeah. what <laughs> what happens your freshman year? Uh, freshman year, it's January, first couple of months in, and I'm actually in my dorm room at the time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not out, but I'm about to go out, and it's it's probably like eleven. Yeah, I you know whatever. I was probably playing Fortnite or some shit. Actually, I don't know, Fortnite wasn't even out. No, yet. it wasn't out. All then. right, no more tangents. Anyway, my best friend uh, calls me and was like, "Hey, like we're gonna be going from this party to this party. If you want us to meet it, meet us at the end of this first party." So we can walk together. Okay. So I'm like, yeah, sweet. I bring my backpack because that's what every freshman in high school did or college did. Yeah. And um, I still, I, my bag's right there. I still walk. Yeah, but like, are you the guy in the bar holding? Oh, it? no. that's what I was. So, side tangent. Uh, I they used to call me a runner back in back in college because I didn't have a car because <clears throat> I'd gotten between DUIs and just having a shitty car. Like I just didn't have a mode of transportation. I always lived right. on campus um, until like my junior year of college. So. I would pack a bag with a bottle. At the time, my freshman year, it was Captain Morgan. Then by sophomore, junior year, it was Sailor Jerry because Captain Morgan wasn't strong enough. And a <laughs> two liter of Diet Coke. So a handle of booze and a two liter of Diet Coke. And I would have it in my backpack. Yeah. And I would just show up to parties with it on because a lot of times in college, they'll charge you for a cup or right. you have to like – so I would always just have my booze on me because I was such an alcoholic. I was like, I need to have my booze. You're like, I can't. So I would show up. 
pour myself a couple of shots, pour a couple of my friends some shots, put it in my backpack. And then once I th- thought like I'm done here, I would just walk away. <laughs> And You're like, like I'm t- solo dolo, just this walk. Has nothing else for yeah, me. I'm just like, all right, bye. Yeah. So, your freshman year, going with the backpack to the yes. party. Yes. And then what happens? So I meet up with my friend. Um, I'm gonna name drop Meg Wexler. What's up, Meg Wexler? Meg Wexler, I'll I'll send you this so you can shout out. So you can feel important. Um, she has this bottle of New Amsterdam. Yep. Like a full bottle, like a handle, right? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, just throw that in my bag because we're gonna be walking from here to here, whatever. So we start walking. I backpack, everything's fine. Uh, she swear to God, swear to God, she was like, I need to zip up my jacket. Here is a red solo cup. Can you hold this for a second? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. I take it. She zips her jacket up. Nothing like less than like 30 seconds. Whoop, 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 right behind us. And my instinctual, like what I did was I I tossed the cup. Oh, just out of hat. Yeah. Out of just like fuck. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do That's that. That's not the what I'm learning here now is you don't do that. Just walk as if everything is fucking yeah. normal, right? Um, and so I get pulled over. Everyone leaves me, and it's just and you're me. walking. Yeah, it's just me and these cops. Oh, Meg left too. Oh, they all bounced. What the shit, Meg? Meg, we've talked about it. We're gonna talk about it again. Could have been a better friend. Could so have been a better friend. The cops are just they're asking to talk to you since you had the cup. Yeah, they didn't even they let bother. everyone else they go. They didn't even bother with everyone else. God damn. Everyone else. I mean, I, I probably would have done the same thing. I know, but that's you know? just that's... but it's like when it's you, you're like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's what it was. And they're like, Oh, like, where are you going? What was in the cup? And I was like, Oh, what cup? Like nothing. And I'm like, dude, I'm gonna totally you're just doubling down. Guys. I'm like, I'm thinking I'm gonna be an actor one day. I'm gonna fucking make these people look like idiots. Doubled the shit down. They didn't like it. Um next thing I know, kind of is like they're pulling out a breathalyzer test, but at a point they realize I'm like 100% sober. Yeah. So as they're putting it together, they put it away. Oh, really? So they don't even use it. Cops love to fuck you over, right? Man. And I was like, I kind of wanted to do that just to be like, fuck you, like 0.0. Yeah. 0. Like how many times does a cop get to pull out a breathalyzer and it's like a straight up goose egg? Very little. Very little. It makes them feel like they're dummies. And I yeah. wanted to do that, but they noticed it. And they're like, what's in the bag? And I was like, nothing. I'm a criminal justice mate. I'm literally learning the law. Yeah. And they take my backpack off. They'll, they don't ask me anything, and they open up the backpack, and they're like, oh, what is this? And I was like, that's not mine. And it wasn't mine, but, like, who the fuck's going to believe that? Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's not yours. And I was like, no, it's not mine. <laughs> they start patting me down. Uh, Illegal they, search and seizure. Search and seizure, bro. Stop and frisk, New York City. And they get me in the back of this cop car, and they're like, do you want to ride back to campus? And I was like, Yeah. That's really nice of you. Like nothing written up to this point. And by the time we get to campus, I'm coming out. That's when they're writing the citation. And it just says like underage or whatever or like uh, possession of alcohol. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. Like this sucks. I have to tell my dad. Yeah, so he's going to find I out. I call my brother and he's like, you just have to tell him. I always call the brother. I'll always call hey, the brother. how do you deal with uh, our parents when you fuck up? So disappointment. How, do how you does think that work? They like it when you continue to do it. And so I, I told him the next day. <laughs> Low blow to the brother right there. <laughs> When that was more me when, I, oh, when yeah. I fucking continue to do it. Hey, I need your advice since you disappoint our parents so often. How You'll you, get it. You'll how, get it. Yeah, yeah, you get it. You get it. Uh, I told my parents. They were pissed, obviously. So wait, what happens at the end of the night? Did they take the bottle from you? Yes. So they, the bottle's gone? They took the bottle. They took – that's all I had. Yeah. And yeah. so then you just go – they drive you back to campus, right? You have the ticket, and then you just go back home? Yeah. So did you do this a lot? Um because I majored in political science and my minor was American history, but I was planning on going to law school. Like I right. took the LSAT and everything. So did you – I would get towards – when I stopped playing football and my alcoholism got out of control, like sophomore, junior year, I would go nuts at the cops. Because our – at FAU, the Boca Raton Police Department was our university – like police department right. like we didn't have like fau cops they were boca raton police officers oh, okay so they took it real serious obviously because they're actual cops um <laughs> but whenever they would show up to my apartment because i was getting too drunk or being too loud i'd be like fuck you you don't have a fucking warrant and like slam the door and like did you ever lash out like that to no. the police no because you were studying criminal terrified. justice okay. it was just more the fact that i was like no, I was just scared. Yeah. I didn't have that in me. I was so stupid. I was pre-law, so I thought I knew everything about the law. I have always thought I've never known anything about anything. Yeah, that's which, like, that's a good way to play it. Yeah, until like you're like, you know, maybe I know something. Yeah. Like I should say something. But I was like, oh, they have to know better than me. Yeah. But even though I was like, I don't think you can do that. But yeah. But I was also really early with like this degree. Like I didn't know. Well, lot. and that's the other thing too is like you can – 
people say it all the time. Like, well, they're not allowed to do that. They can. They're still gonna fucking do it. Yeah. Well, they'll they've just got find other guns. ways. To, they'll just find other ways to get around it. Like well, that's the thing with the law. Is like, yeah, like the obvious thing of why they pulled you over may not be legal, but they have something in their back pocket that yeah. they can use once you pull that out. Yeah, and that's the thing. I've talked about this, I, I think, on this show before, but in the state of Florida, because it's a, a state law, they have something called resisting arrest without violence, which is basically an umbrella law that gives police jurisdiction to arrest anyone, and right. then they can chalk it up to a re res uh, resisting arrest without violence. Right. So I got that. That was the only charge I had. So when I went in front of the judge, she threw it out. She goes, well, you can't resist arrest unless you're being arrested for something. So she threw it out. So nothing. Right. And everyone goes, oh, well, it was thrown out. I go, yeah, I still got fucking tackled, taken to the ground, handcuffed, shoved in the back of a cop car, and my night was fucking ruined. Like, it's not like, oh, it's well, dropped, so who cares? Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Like, get over it, Brennan. Your, your night is still – but that's the thing is people are like, oh, well, they can't do that. It's like they can and they will, yeah. and then if it gets thrown out later, it gets thrown out later. But as of right now, you're fucked. Yeah. So you're right. very much on the whole, like, they know better than me, which is smart. At that moment, yeah. You don't get you don't get thrown onto the ground and a knee in the back of your neck. Yeah, I don't get – I would do. I would have been killed. Yeah. I was, I didn't, she I, literally said to me, who's the bitch now? <laughs> At this one party, I was like, can you believe this bitch wants to come in our house without a warrant? And I slammed the door in her face. And like 10 minutes later, she knocked on the door and I opened it. And she ripped me out, tackled me down, put her knee in the back of my neck and said, who's the bitch now? Wow. Yeah. But hey, the charges were dropped. So no big deal. Yo, she just owned you. Yeah, she That's the cool. That's some cool shit. Yeah. Like I hate to say it, but that's, yeah. no, that's it was badass. fucking cool. I tried to talk about it on stage, but people didn't. You get probably it. closed the door. She turned around and was like, Do you, Watch you ready this. for this? I'm about to fucking fuck this kid up. She I, in the bit I say she ripped me out of the door frame like I was white privilege personified. <laughs> yeah. Literally. And then just owned you. You just got karen Yeah. Uh yeah. So So you get you get there and you're like, I gotta tell dad. Yeah. So I call my parents. My yeah. parents, like they're upset, but they it wasn't like the end of the world. Did you tell um, him you weren't drunk or anything? You obviously yeah, you yeah, led yeah, yeah, you led yeah. with that. I led like, with that. Yeah. I was like, before anything, I just want to let you know that I wasn't drunk. And he's like, what? And I'm like, all right, now, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the big thing that I hate, I don't know how your experience is it with it, but like court dates take forever. Yeah, I hate it. It takes forever, and like so, like they're always like two or three months out. Three months later, I finally have my court date. My parents are my lawyers. Are your parents lawyers? No. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's the whitest I've ever felt. It's the whitest I've ever felt. So they're not attorneys. No, my my dad is it works in law enforcement on a level. Yeah, but he's not a fucking lawyer. And my mom is a nurse, and she was retired by the time I went to court. It, yeah, I was like, I feel white. Mm -hmm. Only whiter I've ever felt is like when I'm like mowing the lawn or yeah. like raking leaves. I don't get that. All right. Anyway, I, I start talking to the judge and. It's literally kind of the same thing. The judge is like, you're a good kid. Like, I don't think there's any malcontent. Now suck my dick. Now get over here and move my robe. But he says the three things. So eventually, I get a misdemeanor, mm -hmm. a $600 fine, possession of alcohol, uh, intent to distribute alcohol to minors, uh, and purchase of the alcohol, and being underage. And I'm like, none of that is true. Yeah, that's and a that's lot what of charges. I too. A lot of charges. I'm like, none of that's true. Like, I promise you. Like, I, I didn't do it. Like, I told him the whole story, and he was like, all right, like, what I can do, I can get this expunged, but it's going to be a three-month uh, remove of your license. Like, we're oh, going to take your license away for three months. Yeah. And the license doesn't go away until June. It was June, July, August. The only three months I have a car because I'm home. Yeah. Those are the months that they took away my license. Fuck off. Right. So, because that was just like Shippensburg. I don't know, maybe Pennsylvania, but I know the, the area's rule for when you get an underage. And I had to do 20 hours of community service, which was fine. I'd yeah, like, the 20 say, hours isn't it. It's the fucking losing the license. So I lost my license, 20 hours of community service. I painted my grade school so bad that they hired a painting team right after I was done. <laughs> right, like literally right after I was done. Take I was that. Like, Did you still drive? Uh, I got an occupational license, okay. so like only to and from work. Okay. When I did like over the summer. It's oh summer. yeah, because your parents were at the court date, so they knew. So it's not like you could go home and be like, twenty hours of community service. That's it. I'm right. gonna take the car. See yeah. you later. But the moment was the best part about it was the cop, the 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 the, the judge was like, we can have another court date, and all of this can go away if you plead not guilty and bring in your friend Meg. Yeah. 
and bring in Meg Wexler to talk about it. To and, openly admit her wrongdoings? Yes, but also she – I don't I don't know, but I don't think she would have gotten in trouble at that point because yeah, it's cause they, Well, that's the thing. Is the cops have to be present. You can't, right. you can't incriminate yourself by just being like, I did this without any evidence or anything. Right. So like I don't think she would have gotten in trouble, but I would have had nothing. Right. And he was like, as long as you do. And what did Meg do? And as long as you do not guilty. I look at my parents and I'm like, guilty. Oh, no. Yeah, man. Yeah. No. Greg's not a snitch. No. All right? Greg's not a snitch. I, I mean, technically, you wouldn't be a snitch. You could just have her come in and snitch, and on, snitch herself. on herself. Yeah, I was like, nah, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. I'll fuck it. God, look at you being a man amongst the people. I know. She was. She really is you one of really my best friends. You really are a good kid. I had. Dude, you I was really like, are a even good beyond kid. the point of like, I don't want to incorporate anyone else. I just didn't want to do it anymore. It was yeah. so long. It's exhausting. When I got my second DUI, they. Uh, it was after – so in Florida, like if you get them – if you get two within five years, it's like harsh – like jail time, like harsh penalties. If it's outside of five years, it's basically the same penalties as your first DUI. The thing is it's based on your adjudication date, not yeah. your arrest date. So yeah. I got arrested for my first DUI in like November of whatever year it was. I didn't get adjudicated like you're talking about because it's three months here, three months there, blah, 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 until July of the next year. So I didn't end up getting my punishment until almost a year later. So then fast forward to September of 2017, I get arrested for a DUI. And I go in front of the judge and they list out all of these terms for a second DUI within five years. Because all the judge sees is I have a second DUI from like – from 2012. Yeah. That's when it was adjudicated. I got the DUI in 11, but it was adjudicated That's in crazy. 12. How unlucky is that? So – he just sees the dates. So he goes, oh, second DUI within five years. And I'm like, not guilty. Not, I'll take this to fucking trial. Like, this is not my second DUI in five years. This is my second DUI in five and a half years, <laughs> which is a huge legal distinction. Know the difference. Um, And so I plead not guilty. But then it's another three months. And in that time, I have to get all the paperwork together and all the court documents and stuff. And then I three months later, I go in front of the judge. Then it gets postponed again because he's like missing something. So finally, like six months later, I go in front of him and he reads it and he goes, oh, by the skin of your teeth. And I go, yeah. He goes, so it's your second DUI outside of five years. This is all the new things. And I go, guilty. Let's get out of here. <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's like they, they draw the pro And that's why – and you know this, but that's why they – so many people are wrongfully convicted because – They've got jobs. They can't make bail. Yeah. So they're just like, I can't sit in here for four months. Like, I need to get out now. I'll plead guilty to this, you know, first level misdemeanor, th third level felony just to get out of here so I can go back to work because right. I'm not going to make rent this the month. The process is crazy. It's nuts. It's crazy. So, all right, let's talk about last thing. We've got a couple minutes. Uh, we're actually about that time. We'll save it. Yeah. We're going to save the laced dab. Oh, yeah. Was that fucked up? Holy, dude. Holy shit. We'll tease it for next time. Meg, be a better friend. We still love you, though. Thanks for we coming out. We do love you. Thanks for coming out to the, the comedy shows. In Absolutely. Oh, she lives in New York? Nah, Philly. Oh. But that's she how good of come, a friend. She comes all the way out? You hear that? Huge shout out to Meg, man. Shout out to Meg. Plug everything one more time. The all show, right. Instagram, all of it. Instagram is at Greg Melly. Worth a follow. I YouTube. Guess. YouTube is same thing. It's at Greg Melly. Uh, my show, New Kids Comedy, New Kids on the Mic. It's in the East Village. It's usually every second Sunday of the month. January 22nd is what we're doing this month. It's me and my girlfriend, Jacqueline Laurie Edwards, who you will uh, meet soon. Yeah. Right? We Two love weeks. that. We love, we love power couples, guys. So follow that. The Instagram is New Kids Comedy. Follow that. It's, it's awesome. It's been absolutely blowing up. The support's been crazy. We have incredible headliners. The lineups have been really phenomenal. I host it, so... We know what else. Perfect, man. Huge. Thank you, everybody, for listening at Brennan T Comedy on all social media. BrennanTComedy.com. Check out the one man show. Check out the new podcast with me, Daniel Torado, and Matt Fulcher on The Power of How. And we'll talk to you all next week. Thanks for having me, brother. Dude, that was fun. Huge.